Here's a spring question which, oh, there's an error. This should be a M, sorry, ON15, P22, all right. So we have a trolley T moving along a frictionless surface. Frictionless is very nice. I like it because that means there's no energy converted to heat. To heat. And normally in this setup, whenever you lose energy to heat, we consider it loss. Because how are you going to get back the energy? You're not going to get it back. So the, this trolley will move and move and then eventually it will collide with this spring and compress the spring in. And then something happens. Okay, so when this thing hits, it compresses. So the mass of the trolley is given, compressed by 5.4 cm as it comes to rest. So you kind of have to imagine the scenario happening here. You compress until the spring maybe come and uh, cannot do clockwise like this. The block. And then the trolley. How to draw the trolley? It's a square with two wheels and something like this. Yeah, so imagine hits, comes in, not moving anymore. So initially, you have a lot of kinetic energy all being converted to something else. We'll see what is that thing later. So they give us the graph of the force applied to the block. Okay, the spring will say, you, why you compress me? I push against you. So this spring, by being compressed, says I'm going to exert a force to stop this block. And it depends, the force can get bigger depending on extension. Now, you know, this graph is a bit weird. Usually we put F here and X here, but somehow they swap the axis. So you gotta be careful when reading the graphs later. So now we need to use a graph, use a figure to determine the spring constant of the spring. I think what we could do is, remember why spring constant K, so in Hooke's law, F equals to KX. There are a few ways you can find K. You can take K equals to F minus X, or, wow, this graph is upside down. 1 over the gradient of this graph. Because if you check carefully, the gradient of this graph, if you do this, that will be the change in y over change in x, right? So that will be x over f. And that is exactly opposite to f over x. So I wouldn't recommend the gradient method because now this graph is upside down. The axes are swapped. So maybe let's stick with f over x. And we can do that because... The graph starts at the origin, so it doesn't matter if you take the gradient or just a point. I think I like the point right up there. So a horizontal here will be 5.4. And the vertical line goes until... Wow, I cannot draw straight lines anymore. This will be 4.4. Okay, so we'll pick those F and X values. The force is 4.4 Newton. Actually, why am I writing the working here? Never mind, let's continue. And the extension is 5.4, but be careful of the CM. 5.4 times 10, negative 2 meters. Okay, so when you do that, press calculator, we should get about 81.481. So I kind of <laughs> wrote the working up there already. So 81 will be our answer that we can write on the final answer line. So this is a two marker question. One usually comes from the final answer. And the other one will come from you knowing how to use your Hooke's law, whether in the gradient, one over gradient, or one is k equals to f over x. That also works. Okay, so this one will be another mark. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Oh, not there. Here. Okay. So what is the work done by T compressing the spring by 5.4 cm? What is work done again? Huh? Work done is change in energy, right? Why is there a work done by T? You see, there's really two kinds of uh, things happening here. Number one, when this T comes into contact with the block, it does work on the spring. It compresses the spring. That's why we have this. But at the same time, <clears throat> the spring is pushing against the block. So there's two work done here, and does it matter which one we're looking at? Well, not exactly. There's one positive, one is negative, but for this level, we don't really worry about the positive or negative. So work done. Let's start off with the equation first. I'm going to keep the picture of the spring inside. So work done here. Means called force times distance. Ah. Well, yeah, kind of it, but, 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 but the force is changing, so better not to write that. We stick with the 
area under the fx graph. Or you could say like the, the, the fx graph. Area under fx graph are not area under xf graph. Be careful, this graph is the upside down. X is here. So anyway, area under fx graph, or you can take half force times distance or the compression or half kx squared. Actually, there's so many ways you can choose. The easiest one here is to take half times which force shall we take? Hmm, how, how much do you compress this spring ball? You see, when you start off, you have KE. Eventually, all the KE is being converted into EPE in the spring, and that change in energy is associated with the work done by these forces. So I guess we could choose the maximum extension when it comes to rest. 4.4 newtons, 5.4 extension. So well, let's plug in those same values. So I'm going to use this. So we will have 4.4 newtons and an extension of 5.4 cm. Okay, then we take this, we should get a value of 0 0.1188. And we can write here the final answer 0 0.12. So one mark comes from your final answer, A1. The other one comes from any of these methods, even if you got maybe the answer wrong. But you got right the equation, then you get okay already. So recommend to write equation. Now a note of caution for area under the graph. Under the fx graph. So if you want to find this graph, you are finding what area? You are actually finding this area, you know. Because normally, this work done is force distance. And when you draw this, you're finding really the area between the line and the x-axis. Or rather, the extension. But now, since your whole thing is swapped, you must also swap it upside down. Okay? But you'll get the same, you get the same value even if you use the wrong area. But just know, the area is this one. Huh? Okay, let's see what we need to do next. So the spring then expands and causes T to move in the opposite direction of opposite to its initial direction. At the time that T lose contact with the block is moving at a certain speed. Okay, so we okay, we, we continue the picture. So this KE, the moment they hit, all converted to EPE. What happens after that? That is what they're talking about. So after you hit, and this EPE will start to become KE of all these objects. So let's, let me try and redraw it. I don't know where to redraw. I redraw here. Lah. So the spring will now be starting to expand to original length. And that will push not just the block attached to it, but also the trolley T. So now this will start to have a kinetic energy. And not only that, this block here will also start to have a kinetic energy while the EPE decrease. So the conversion that's happening here, oh, I've got many conversion, no? Mm, okay, okay, never mind. We need to talk about that. But this one, now your your your, your block, uh, what was it? T is moving at a speed of 0. Point, a wrong color. 0. 0.75 meter per second. That's actually lower than the original, you know? Because if you look at the original, it's moving towards at 1.2. But now when they move away, eh, only 0 0.75. Where the energy go? Nah, this fellow also got energy. There's two kinetic energies happening here, but only one kinetic energy here. So see the change in, in the velocity? Quite interesting. So we need to describe, tell all the story of the energy changes from the time that T is in contact with the block. So the scenario that we just draw. So when T is in contact with the block, that would be the picture right here. Okay, so once they are in contact, first thing we're going to say that the kinetic energy of the trolley and also the block actually, the block also moving, right? The block is stuck on the string, uh, changes to elastic potential energy stored in the spring. And for one moment in time, 
nobody will be moving. It's just fully stored, ready to release. And then once the spring says, okay, time to release, the spring will convert this EPE into kinetic energy of the block as well as trolley T. It's trolley T. So we're going to talk about the energy changes after that. So the EPE stored in the spring changes to two kinetic energy now. Changes to KE. You must say, don't you say KE. Ah. KE of who? KE of trolley and KE of block. There we go. So it's a kind of a side note. Lah. So note the KE of block is lower because you end up with 0 0.75 meter per second only because t will eventually lose contact with the block so this fellow will fly away now okay so these are our two main ideas here the things that you want to mention is firstly ke of trolley you must say ke of trolley i don't say ke become epe not enough and then of spring so g epe in spring so this one will give the first then after that you want to talk about EPE in spring change to KE okay, of trolley and block. Must say of who, of who. Don't say cannot because the must scheme underline. Underline means you must specify whose KE and whose EPE is it. So let's finish up the last part here. We have to determine the change in momentum of T. Why is there a change in momentum of T? Ah? Oh, because there's a change in velocity. You see, when the trolley is happily moving along towards the spring, it is moving at a speed of, oh, so speed again, uh, 1.2 meters per second. Look at this. But when you're going away, you are at 0 0.75. So you kind of change your momentum already. So the first one we're going to say is 1.2. After you collide, collide, do some interaction with the spring, now you're moving to the left. And this is a bit slower, 0 0.75 meters per second. So when you see momentum, you stay calm. We find P equals to MV. But then looking for a change in momentum. So we delta P, delta MV. Is the mass tro trolley changing? Ah? No, ah, the gift is 250 grams. So that's a 0 0.25 kg. No change in mass means the thing that changed is really the velocity. So we take final minus initial. Oh, momentum is a vector. Direction matters. I think I will choose to define anything that moves to the right as positive, anything that moves to the left as negative, which means it will be positive velocity 1.2 and negative velocity 0.75 to the left. So then we multiply everything. Okay, 0 0.25 times final minus initial. So based on my current system, it will be negative 0 0.75 minus the initial, which is 1.2. Okay, so with that, I will get a value of negative. Ah, never mind the negative, just tells me the direction. 4, 8, 7, 5. If I run it off to 2SF, this could be 0 0.49. If you put a negative, also correct. If you don't put a negative, it's also fine. Because it really de depends on how you define your system. Where is positive, where is negative. So once for final answer. And one mark comes if you remember, oh yeah, ho, P equals to MV. That's C1 for the equation. Alright, so that's how we can think of interactions with blocks. Remember, kinetic energy and elastic potential energy is interchanging. Convert to here and there and it's associated with work done. That's why there's forces involved. But that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.